G'day and welcome to another massive edition of the MCFNL Footy Show. All thanks to our great mates over at Bendigo Bank. My name's Genji. I'm, I'm rejoined again by the great uh, Mitch Tinning, the operations manager, mate. So you've enjoyed a few weeks off and uh, Grant kicked you out, mate, and all, all of a sudden the hits just went up. Um, yeah. Not, not enough room in our budget to, uh, to keep him in for another week? No, he'll come back again, but um, yeah, I've been given a second chance, so I'm happy to be back. Oh, excellent, mate. Well, we uh, we had record hits um, last last couple of weeks, which is great. The uh, the the I think the mid season review is something um, quite fascinating, that, and the clubs really enjoyed, which is uh, really positive, mate. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, great analysis of all the all the games so far, and the games still to come, and there's um, plenty of changes ahead, I think, still. Yep, definitely right there, mate. Uh, before we start talking footy from this past weekend, uh, last week we announced the finals. Uh, the venues for uh, for the upcoming 2018 uh, final series, mate. Uh, talk us through that. You're pretty happy with how everything's going. Yeah, uh, yeah. Back at Hedges in Prince's um, Park again, uh, as we have been for the last few years. We did survey the clubs and ask them about their ideas on a Castle Main based final this year. Um, knocked back, not not by a great deal. It was pretty even contribution from all the clubs, and it's something we might look at in years to come. But yeah, this year just uh, back in Mirabar again, which should be good. Yeah, excellent. Uh, we've get, been getting some good crowds over there the last few years, and judging by the way the competition's shaping up across football and netball, I think uh, the, the crowds will flock there even more. And I mean, Princess Park, what, what better way to uh, celebrate a great grand final? Nothing beats that uh, crowd stand getting packed to the rafters, mate. Absolutely, and it's arguably the, the best grand over that way. Um, and a fantastic atmosphere come finals time. Was told many times in my past life uh, in in footy that the uh, MCDFNL was the most must watch grand final across central Victoria because of that grandstand. And uh, my first visit there was not disappointed. That's why we were disappointed about this uh, the latest round, uh, round 11 of, uh, of senior football. And uh, Avoca and Navarra ended up being an interesting contest. It was a game where Avoca were virtually playing for their finals, but Navarra just stepped up the intensity and kicked away. Yeah, probably a bigger margin than I would have picked um, for this game. Um, Navarra are obviously flying. They've won six of their last seven games. Um, I think they're still pressing for a top four finish. Um, and Avoca, they've dropped out now. Um, and they've got Rovers and Lexington in the next two weeks. So they're in a dangerous spot at the moment. But if they can win those couple of games, then they could, might be able to get back in there. Well, they probably only need to win if, if they can at least get close on the scoreboard and then... Um then enjoy a bit of a percentage finish to the uh, the season. But I think they've got uh, Campbell's Creek and Denoli. Hopefully the, those teams take them up, uh, put on a bit of a fight, but that would make things interesting. I, I don't think they're out of this finals race at all. No, they're not out by any means, but they do need to start winning a couple of games against those teams that are above them on the ladder because all of their wins so far, I think, have been against teams below them. So, um, yeah, games like Rovers and Lexington that they've got coming up, I think they're real tests. Yeah, well, uh, Avoca, I hear they were... Uh, they had a pretty strong lineup on the park, and Navarre uh, just what uh, the tonic they needed uh, to have a big win. Uh, Trentham took down Campbell's Creek in their biggest win of uh, of the season. Great to see Luke Whitehouse, who's a very handy cricketer, he stepped up and kicked the lazy 13 goals in a best on ground performance there for the Saners. Yeah, look, it was a well needed percentage boost for Trentham. They were the only team that hadn't played Campbell's Creek and Denali. They've got uh, Denali next week. Um, they're a game clear in sixth now. Another big result probably expected for them next week against Denali as well. They'll keep boosting up that percentage, um, but they'll be pretty comfortable with where they're sitting at the moment. Yeah, spot on there, mate. And it was something that uh, we sort of spoke about in the mid-season reviews about Trentham, that their percentage was lacking, but they hadn't faced some of these teams, which is crucial. But the upside for them is they probably start to break away from that pack with the teams below them losing. All of a sudden, they are, as you said, a game clear in sixth position and uh, ahead of that log jam. So it gives them a little bit of breathing space, which is a pretty positive in Campbell's Creek. Well, uh, look, they'll live to fight another day. Uh, I think a result that caught everyone off guard, mate. Um, it was Carisbrook, way too strong for Maribor Rovers by 180 points. Someone, some punters actually tipped that this could be an upset here for the Rovers if they're good enough, but not a 30-goal margin the other way. No, look, when Carisbrook are on, they're definitely on. Um, yeah, demolishing Rovers, who are now just in the 8 on percentage. Um, Rovers must bounce back this week against Avoca to stay in there. They're in danger of falling out now. So they'll um, they'll need to get some wins and they'll need to get that percentage back up after a heavy loss. Yeah, Ash Minari's been kicking a few goals, mate. I think he kicked a, a lazy 10 on the day and uh, takes him clear to uh, to 69. I think he's 18 clear ahead of uh, ahead of one of his teammates there on uh, on 51. So he is firming up to be an outstanding acquisition to this team. And if he keeps going, um, look, it's we wouldn't think he'd crack the ton, but... He's not too far off, but if he has a few more big weeks. No, he's not too far off. He's 18 ahead, as you said, and um, that 18 probably coming a couple of weeks ago when he did kick 18 goals. Yeah, that's and, right. <laughs> um, 
But look, I'd expect a few more big bag, big bags from him um, in the weeks to come. But um, there's yeah, there's a lot of good players still challenging him for that top spot in the goal kicking. Well, exactly. I mean, we, we use the mathematics type of things, mate. If we if we see Carisbrook making the big dance, they've got a they've got a, at least seven games to go. So his average at the moment uh, is quite pleasing. He only needs to kick over four goals a game. What about a grand final special? He kicks the opening goal of the grand final. That's goal game one or goal one hundred. The crowd launch onto the field. I think the scene has sets itself uh, beautifully. Or it could be the winning uh, winning goal in the prelim. Um, anyway, we're just throwing around things there, but it's a pretty exciting time to see a great forward like him. Uh, Molden has kept its finals hopes alive with a big win over Newstead. And the Bombers, uh, quite impressive. And their new coach, uh, Wayne Birchall, who's, uh, who's back in the fold at the club, is doing some great things over there. Absolutely. Molden are on a roll at the moment. They've, they're have just one game out of the eight, and you wouldn't have thought that. Um, they've still got a chance to get in there, and I'd, I wouldn't rule them out. Yeah, you're right. The new senior coach, he's, he's built the, the group up around him. Um, a number of great performances in recent weeks. Pushing top eight, I'm not sure if it's too late, but they, they could still sneak in there. Yeah, definitely. And uh, from all, all reports around the, the Bombers as well, is that with Birch's appointment, uh, we've seen quite a few more people get around the club uh, at the moment. And uh, as as you, as you know with footy, mate, uh, a lot of clubs are preparing for 2019 now. Well, the success that the, the Bombers are enduring, which because they've had a few lean uh, lean periods, this is exciting for them to, uh, to to probably recruit better players for 2019 to probably get them back into you know maybe a top, sort of a top six position if they just miss out on finals. Yeah, and I'd expect that for next year. I think um, a lot of potential recruits will be looking at Molden now, looking and going, look, they're, they're winning games and they're a much better outfit now, and that's a club that they want to go to. And obviously that uh, senior coach they've got there is now very highly respected and the, the players are getting around him at the moment and it's all going well. Good destination club to get to uh, as we speak. As uh, we look at Lexton and Denoli. Denoli hit the scoreboard pretty hard on the day with, uh, with eight goals, but the Tigers, 100-point winners, very, very good. Yeah, big win for Lexington as expected, but yeah, you're right, the Eagles manage eight goals, which is a good effort. Um, Lexington need all the wins they can get. They've got Carisbrook and Nutty in the last two rounds of the year, which is which is not ideal for them, so if they can notch up a few wins before then, they might just be able to hang on and stay in the eight. Yeah, how, how would you rate that performance from them? Was it uh, sort of what they needed? Yeah, it was. Um, it was 100 points, so it's a, it's a big win for them. Um, they probably could have kicked a bit straighter and maybe even boosted that margin a little bit more, and that percentage is going to be very important come the end of the year. Exactly. Uh, next game, which was uh, which was pretty exciting, Natty Bial was snuck over the line against Royal Park by 44 points, but I think the uh, the Swans sort of kicked away late in the game to, uh, to extend that margin out to a comfortable win. Yeah, another good win for Natty. Um, a big test for them next week. They've got Harcourt, so... That could be very interesting, um, and I wouldn't be royal, ruling out Royal Park yet. They've got Creek and Denali still to come this season, um, so some big percentage boosts there. They've got Molden this week who are up and coming, so that could be a really interesting game. Seems like that'll be the uh, the danger game for them, uh, for both sides. Uh, but geez, the, the final game we'll have a look at was simply sensational. The Hawks and the Lions fought out a 12-7 apiece draw. What a game. Yeah, what a game indeed. We've... Um, we knew this would be close, 3v4, three three and uh, we've got another two top four clashes this weekend, which is exciting as well. But look, Talbot had the big third quarter. Um, Harcourt came home strong with four goals to, to two in the last. Um, it just wasn't enough to hold on to the lead there. So um, either side couldn't get the couldn't get the points, but they, but they both shared them there. So um, yeah, two top four encounters this week. I think we're getting another couple of close games. Yeah, I, I think with that fix, with that result there, it's probably done both uh, both teams a favour actually, because now we've got a, a one and a half game gap between. Uh, fourth and fifth. So I mean, we talk about that all-important double chance that is the top four to make it. That's uh, that could that could hurt uh, Navarre's chances. I, I don't think I'd, I know both teams would have loved to walk away with a win, but that just creates that handy buffer. And with the closest of the fixture at the moment, it's going to make it a, a very difficult for them to get back. Well, Nevada to sort of get into that top four now. They're going to have to re- rely on results going their way and getting wins themselves. Yeah, they might get some results their way, though. They have, um, so Carisbrook and Tolbert next week, um, Natty and Harcourt. So, look, Harcourt and Tolbert could probably both lose their games next week. Um, and then again, if Navarre win, they, they, they're back right where they were. So, um, yeah, you're probably right. It's probably a bit hard for them to get in there now. I can't see the top four changing too much, but I, mean, I think if anyone's going to get in there, it's Navarre. Oh, you're spot on there. You can't knock the champs down. They are fantastic, just like our great sponsors, Vertigo Bank, who have uh, been supporting us week in, week out and getting behind this competition. Mitch, thanks so much for joining us, uh, for, for looking back on the latest round, mate, and we look forward to catching up with you later on in the week. Very good. Thanks for having me.